Hi guys, it is Tokyo Rob here, and I wanted to do kind of like a uh, off the cuff emulation station uh, showcase, basically. Uh, basically, just everything I have on emulation station, and maybe a quick little guide on how it looks or how it works. So, just very casually, I just want to gauge your guys' reaction to see if you guys enjoy this type of content. Um, I will go into uh, this PC because this is where I have my emulation station and I created an emulation folder and this emulation folder I can you can see it's pretty big because I have a lot of games uh, basically this folder the way I did it is that I can copy this folder add it into a drive external drive and I can transfer this to any of my PCs and install emulation station pretty easily what I did was uh, as you can see is I have the BIOS in one folder, I have the emulators in one folder, I have emulation station in one folder, and I have the Yuzu app uh, path. Uh, Yuzu works a little bit differently in that you need to have a somewhere on your app data where if you know how to get to app data, you need to basically have this. You need to have this folder. Um, and for example, my path is users, I took a rob, app data, roaming, and yuzu, and then you would just throw this in there. That's how you would get a yuzu to work if you transfer it to another PC. Either way, that's not too important. So I just wanted to go through a rundown of the emulators I have. Let's uh, make this a little bigger. And in my situation, I have Semu, Yuzu, Messen, SNES, Citra, Mame, MelonDS, PCSXD, MGBA, DuckStation, Zemu, which I don't use Zemu at all, PEP, SSSP, uh, Desmu, uh, Redream, and Dolphin64. These are just the emulators that I was interested. Of course, you can add others. Some people go into PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, or even uh, N64, which, as you can see, I don't have, but I don't play too many N64 games, and a lot of them have been ported to other systems, so I probably play the uh, updated versions on other systems but you can always add these if you wanted to add a system that is not listed in emulation stations like default uh, setup like yuzu for example i'll have a video on it and you can just refer to that on a quick little guide on how to do it i won't show you how to install yuzu or its product keys and keys config config but if you can figure that part out and how to get Yuzu, it's really easy to add it back into Emulation Station. And the same process that allows you to add Yuzu back into Emulation Station is the same process that you would need for other custom systems that you don't have by default on here. Uh, <clears throat> these are uh, all the stuff I have for that. And then we go into the Emulation Station folder and then we go into ROMs all. These are basically all the ROMs that the system has by default in there. As you can see, there is no Xbox 360. So those are the type of uh, files that you would need to add on your own. But that's not too important. Too important. You could play a lot of the Xbox 360 games on your PC already through Game Pass or the Xbox Store. So that's something I wasn't interested in. And same thing for the PlayStation 3 games. A lot of them are on the PlayStation 4 or you can play on the PlayStation 4, uh, 5, I mean. A lot of the big ones. But either way, anyways, let's get into the meat and potatoes here. I have my ROMs folder. And as you can see, these are all the ROM folders that I decided to keep. Your emulation station will have a ton of ROM folders for the many systems that exist out there. But these are the ones that I just decided to keep for myself because these are the only ones I see myself realistically using. I don't... Um, I left my PS Vita over there. but So, for example, I have PS Vita and 3DS, and while well, I do have already a 3DS, um, as you can see, I'm playing a, a Tactics on here, I do also have a PS Vita, so there's no need for me to really play those on the PC unless I wanted to stream them, right? Um, but yeah, so now that we go into here, uh, this is the shortcut I created in order to open it from my taskbar. But we can open up Emulation Station and we can give you a little uh, showcase on all the stuff that I have and what I have set up. Uh, this is how Emulation Station is not going to look like for you. Uh, let's just add it. Let's just make it look 
how it would look if you were to do it. Um, let me see here. Might need to. Yeah, I gotta connect my controller one second. Let's see where it is. One second here. Okay. Yeah, I had plug plugged it in into the wrong one, so we have my controller. Oops, I have connected to the Xbox. Let's see real quick. I plugged it into the wrong one. Okay. Well, either way. There we go. Okay. Yeah, my controller was plugged into my PC for charging and not for the USB setup. So either way, uh, this is not how it would look for you. Like I said, this is a very off the cuff video. I think this is how it looks like normally. Let's see. Nope. Not this one. I've downloaded a couple. Let's see if it's this one. Yes. All right, so this is how Emulation Station is going to look for you when you first open it up. As you throw ROMs into, and we can show you real quick. As you throw ROMs into your specific folders, that is what is going to tell Emulation Station for your specific emulators to show up. That's how you get these, these icons right there. Uh, yeah, so that's how you get these icons. Uh, we're going to go back into my normal UI. Basically, you'd go into Theme Downloader, and this is how you download uh, all the specific themes. Um, for example, I use... You know, this is a pretty one. Let's download this. I feel like this one's, like, brand new. Uh, basically, well, so I'm showing you how to download it. So this is how you would do it. Uh, it would download... Uh, the theme and it automatically installs so it's re relatively simple um, and if you know guys if you have any questions regarding anything that has to do with the emulation station I'll be happy to help I spent so much time trying to learn this as you can see it shows that it's installed you just go into your theme and you go into uh, whichever one it was that it, I can't even remember I think it was iconic the one I downloaded it you just select over it and then you just exit out and it'll add it in. So yeah, this is how it's going to look. It's pretty easy. Um, I like the the other one I picked because I'll show you in a second. I think it's Artflix. Retrofix, Artflix. And I'll show you why. It's because it'll play little trailers of uh, games and stuff. Uh, yeah, so this is just a showcase. You know, pretty easy. Uh, you know, I have multiple games on here, 1943, Battletoads, you know, I have Dragon Ball Z, Super Battle 22, uh, this was a game I remember I played on the PlayStation 1, on a Japanese disc, Metal Slug, see, and I like this one because it shows the, like, the little trailers, uh, yeah, I have 3DS. I don't have too many on here. I have 2DS. I love the 2DS games because, you know, these are like games that are kind of forgotten about uh, relatively. Yeah, you know, Fire Emblem. I have Pokemon Conquest, a game that you rarely see these days, you know. And honestly, once you've done the initial setup and you've downloaded this and you're able to throw the ROMs in here, it's really easy to set up. And I think this is honestly the definitive way of being able to uh, play all your retro games in one system. And you know what guys, I'm going to show you real quick, let me go get it real quick. Okay, I'm here. So now the reason why this is all so, so important uh, to do and, you know, I just brought my PS Vita to show you guys real quick that I have it. Uh, the reason why this is all so important is because nowadays you have a lot of, like, Windows PCs. And... Just kind of showing you real quick. So this is my Windows PC. This is my GPD Win 4. Um, and basically I have all my retro games installed. I have the same system, Emulation Station, in there. 
Uh, but basically, this is how I play my retro games uh, when I'm traveling and stuff like that. Obviously, I'm showing you guys on the PC. Um, and yeah, guys, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of Fire Emblem. You have uh, Game Boy Color games as well. You have GameCube games. And I, I feel like I'm ranting a little bit, but I hope this is like a good showcase of like what you want. So this is these are my Nintendo Switch games. And you know, I have these on my Switch as well. Uh, as you can see, I have my Switch right here. And I have games like Pokemon Violet. Uh, just gonna show you real quick here. Yeah, as you can see, like I, ha I have a lot of the games already, like Engage and uh, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, which is right here. You know, it's one of my favorite games. Um, but the, you know, I just want to show, basically just show you guys, and I'm kind of renting here and I think uh, I'm kind of spinning myself in circles, but I just want to show you what Emulation Station looks like and how like nice you can make this look. Um, this is another one of my favorite games right here. And, uh, yeah, guys, this is pretty much it. Uh, you know, I have some Dreamcast games as well. Uh, it's a fun game. Uh, and yeah, I have tons of PlayStation 1 games. And that's all it is. It's just a showcase of, like, how Emulation Station can look. And, uh, yeah, there's different, uh, there's different front ends from it for it, too. Oh yeah, yeah, I have this one. This absolute classic of a gem, Rumble Roses, like, so good, yeah. Uh, it's just a, a meme game, pretty much. Uh, but yeah, you can, you can change it to, like, pretty much anything you want, and whatever fits your taste, right? Like, so you can even have a simple UI like this, where it just shows the system, the games, like, really simple. And the good thing is, it's like, if you have a portable Windows PC, you could connect this to a TV and you could just have this on all the time and this is all you run. You can literally set this up just for that, which is kind of like what I have it for. Let's switch back to my, my little art flicks that I love. And in order to get the artworks, I'll show you real quick. It's usually, all you have to do is just use Scrapper. You have two databases for it. And then, you know, you scrap all games, all systems initially. And then as you add more games, you can just scrap for that specific system for the games that don't have artworks. So, for example, you can do, you know, scrap games that don't have any game enrich. And unfortunately, it's not going to find, like, every game, but it's pretty good. Um, uh, you can also add your Steam games on here. And you can just launch them directly from here. But yeah guys, I feel like I've, I've spoken for like a super, super long time and all I wanted to do was just give you like a little showcase on like how everything looks and just, you know, kind of just share with you guys my love for uh, Emulation Station. So, yeah guys, anyways, uh, like and subscribe. Please leave in the comments if you'd like more in-depth videos on Emulation Station, maybe a little more install stalling or help with files what i might do is i might just do maybe i won't do like a full video on certain things but if you guys subscribe and like maybe i'll do shorts and then i'll teach like if someone has a question i might do a short just showing you how to do it and then just keeping it that way so you know just let me know guys anyways hope you guys enjoyed the video and Keep in touch. Bye.